Hello and welcome back to Scale War Machines as we continue with my diorama of the M113 ACAV in Vietnam. In this episode I'm starting on the base. For that I'm using foam board which is a type of dense foam that has paper backing on two sides. I removed the paper backing and used it to build up a subtle variation in terrain that will become a roadway. In order to protect the foam, here you can see me using deluxe materials foam armour, which is the type of thick PVA glue, which I liberally applied all over the diorama. Here you can subtly see it shining away. Having tested the layout and placed the ACAV on the diorama, the next thing I did was to use this grass mat product, which I believe comes from Model Scene. That was cut up into pieces in order to get the configuration to work, and then it was glued down using Speed Bond. Speedbond is a PVA glue from Deluxe Materials. In order to get it to hug the terrain and create a bit of undulation, the grass mat was pinned down using drawing pins. This helps it adhere and maintains pressure because it really is quite a springy product and you want to get it as tied down to the terrain as possible, so glue and drawing pins will help in that. You'll notice there's a cutout for the tracks and you'll also see that along the edges I went along and just made sure everything glued. This is a reality and scale resin tree trunk. It's going to be cut in half but it will feature on this right hand corner of the diorama. And there you can see the end result of the grass mat phase. You could of course proceed differently with static grass, but for speed the grass mat was easier. When it comes to terrain, I tried out different mud products, put them on a test piece and then worked out which one I wanted to use. Before going to the mud stage, I decided to protect the little gutter area. There's a tiny little recess there that's going to have a drain or gutter and a little bit of water running down it. And in order to protect it, I used epoxy sculpt from Aves. It's really easy to apply, you just sort of smudge it on and then blend it using water or safety solvent. And this creates a nice smooth delineation between the grass and the mud. It also allows you to sculpt in details, like here I'm sculpting in the roots for the tree. As you can see everything can be smooth and the details just refined. I cut little bits of sort of uh, water tracks in the mud. They'll probably be lost later on but it just helps blend everything in. I'm trying to get the best possible transition between the mud and the grass. It should mean it's protected with whatever water product I decide to put in the gutter. Epoxy sculpt is also good, especially if you've got some left over to create little rocks, in this case sort of smooth rocks. Those were just rolled up and applied and then smoothed over and sculpted. Any left over was then put on a piece of glass and used to make other rocks for this diorama or indeed for any other diorama. Here you can see that delineation, the gutter and the rocks. The little cracks and sort of water erosion will hopefully look good. Now onto the figures and the cart. These are the resin figures. In the last episode we looked at plastic figures and resin figures you proceed basically the same way but the cleanup method is different. Here you can see what's called flash and that comes from the moulding process that needs to be removed with the scalpel and then the detail sanded. When it comes to removing resin parts like for this cart just gently score along the line and then break the cut. Here you can see me uh, just sanding using our ever trusty mini craft bench sander. Just a quick way to sand everything down. And if you want wood grain, you can just scrape the piece along the stopped sandpaper disc. Here's the little driver figure. 
a little bit of detail may be required to empty out the cuff otherwise a nice figure and the cows as well were pretty nicely molded you just need to sand everything down either with sanding sticks or a machine like we've got okay the figures were pinned or rather drilled and pinned ready for assembly and here you can see all the parts ready to go assembly was easy everything was glued together with super glue in this case and you can see little bits of epoxy sculpt there that were used to fill up tiny gaps nothing significant I also damaged the arm of that figure so I had to rebuild that and I lost the hand for that figure so that one is a slightly bigger hand but it will work once it's painted and thinned down a bit otherwise the cart kit by cool sign models is excellent but I decided to add a tiny little bit of detail around the wheels where some of the rivet details from the casting process had been damaged that left air bubbles so the easiest thing to do is to fill them and then create rivets here I'm using the RP tools rivet maker you can find out more about this in a previous video but it creates little rivets using plasticard even though I'm gluing plastic to resin as opposed to plastic liquid glue works just to hold them in place and you delicately apply them with liquid glue and just let it all dry then another tool this time this is the nutter tool from the small shop and this allows you to make tiny tiny rivets or in this case nail heads using their proprietary lead foil that comes in the pack you just punch through using the tool again we've got a video on this and they were applied at the top here of each joint just to portray nails a little bit of extra detail there okay we're ready to progress to the next stage Last time I almost finished the figures but actually I forgot to do the laces. I used a beading tool to create the little holes where the laces would go. The beading tool is really excellent actually, really useful. I picked it up at a model show and you can see the difference there. So I pressed on and added more holes before adding red Slater's sprue as laces. You can see the reference there. That thin sprue was cut into little kind of pieces that will become the cross bracing of the laces. And then it's a really finicky job. I've tried to film it as best as I can and you can see all the different mistakes and changes as well along the way. But you can see on the other foot what the goal is, is to create crisscrossing laces. And with a bit of patience and a very fine set of tweezers and some liquid glue applied using Deluxe Materials Blue Fine Applicator Brush, progress starts to be made. This is the other figure, same deal. Just applying the tiny little pieces of red Slater sprue. At the top you can apply more of course to depict the sort of tied up laces. And there's the overall effect when you've got laces going both ways. And finally because it's a bit over scale you can sand it down with sanding sticks. There you go. Whilst the red sprue was out, I decided to put a little bracelet on the seated figure that we saw in the last episode. That's just a case of gently persuading it with liquid glue and tweezers and so on to adhere to the contours of the wrist and then it was applied and of course it softens significantly. The drinks can needed a, an opening, so that was done with the scalpel. And there you can see the bracelet which has adhered to the wrist because of the liquid glue softening it. Next a sling was applied to the M16. These are Aber buckles and then using the Infini models cutting mats which we've looked at in a previous video 
The photo etch buckle was attached to the rifle and then the masking tape, which is Tamiya masking tape sling, was just put threaded through. Most of it off camera because it was just too fiddly to film. Initially I got the placement wrong at the front but then corrected it. And here you can see the finished result. Now onto the groundwork. Lots of diorama products were collected together from Reality and Scale, RP Tools and various other manufacturers' Boontown models. Now you can see the leaf punches from RP models and the tufts of grass that will be applied like so. But first I have to add the mud and I went for those three colours. You can see them here, Wilder and Vallejo. And I also kept handy lots of natural vegetation I got from the garden and the outdoors that will be used in a minute. So I mixed up a kind of muddy brown. I didn't want to go for the traditional sort of red mud of Vietnam. I wanted to add hints of that, but I wanted a kind of wet, damp mud. There were various types of topography and mud in Vietnam. It wasn't all the red, dusty type. That's just put on and blended as best as possible and put liberally over the gutter area. The Wilder products are really good actually and contain little bits of grit and dirt that actually work really well, especially on the roadway. You can see that's just painted directly on and thanks to the foam armour it is protected underneath. These are water-based products anyway. With a slightly lighter mix of those colours, contrast was applied just with a flat brush and around the edges. So the idea was it was deeper in the gully and lighter where the sun would hit and where it would dry out. The tree was test fitted and there are the rocks. Time for the tufts of grass. Now the idea of these, finding a reference that kind of matched the grass mat was important and then they were applied, creating a bit of variety to sort of soften the edge between the mud and the grass and make the grass flow down a bit more towards the gutter. The drier colour was used around things like stones and in the roadway and in various parts of the edge to show dead grass. And you can see the darker tufts are also applied occasionally as well, for variety. Just try to get it to look as convincing as possible. The colours of the grass, of course, can all be blended later. And in fact, this whole diorama will be blended with an airbrush, but it's interesting to see the stages in their natural state. I'm just progressing along the bank, trying to get it to look as realistic as possible. So again with a bit of a lighter mix and a sponge held in tweezers. This is a technique seen on models, but a little bit of sponging or sponge chipping was applied to the roadway. And here are some close-up pictures, but what needed to happen was the darkness of the grass mat needed to blend a bit, so using a bit of wilder pigments I created a dark mud that was used just to blend everything together. You just apply that with water and of course it can be blended afterwards which is what I'm going to do. Here we are, I've got a thick flat brush and I'm just blending with water to make sure it doesn't look too unrealistic. Okay, these are the leaves that were punched out using the RP Tools leaf punches. I put them in water for 48 hours so they were really soft. And then using a white glue like Speed Bond I just started applying them, initially one by one. And then eventually I lost patience and just dumped them all on and then removed what I didn't like. The idea is that these depict old leaves from that tree or trees nearby in a slightly more wooded part of the diorama. Just make sure that everything has a good coating in glue and then water it down so it's not too thick. This is a final going over of all the leaves to make sure that they'll adhere to the diorama.
Here's a load of that vegetation mixed up from different diorama supplies, mainly reality and scale, but also from the garden and all sorts of stuff. Then I just got all the dusty kind of debris that was in the pot and just scooped that into the gutter. Some of these, which come from real bamboo leaves, were taken to one side and cut up into little chunks that were also added. You can see I used a blower there just to make sure everything settles in the gutter. And then using scenic spray glue in a dropper. This was just run all the way along so that everything that's found its way into the gutter will glue and stay there. The idea eventually, as I say, is to put some sort of water product in here as well that will be a bit like that milky glue there and it will sort of add a bit of moisture all the way along the gutter. As if there's been rain sort of in the last 12 hours or so. Here I am just trying to attach little bits of reality and scale, scenery, branches and twigs and so on. You drill first and then sort of apply what you can with glue. As you can see various other little loose bits and twigs and stuff are glued or attached to the roadway. Everything's stuck down with white glue. And then you can start to add bigger sort of shrubs or trees and so on. That's a bit of a ivy root from the garden that's just glued in. Other bits come from reality and scales scatter. And everything is glued and the loose stuff removed. And then you get something like that. So not just a flat terrain, but lots of dirt and mud and stones and so on. You can see it start to take shape. So in the next episode I'll be finishing the groundwork, I'll be putting the little area where the tracks go, reworking some of what I've done and adding more detail along the way. Here are some shots of how it is at the moment. Plenty of detail, lots of different bits and bobs and twigs and leaves and debris. The grass is looking good. And next time you'll see me make vegetation, things like palms and bigger bits of detail that come from Reality and Scales jungle plant sets. And those will be added and of course painted. Here you can see with some of them painted. And then because it's grass and I don't want it to look like a muddy track, you'll see how I tackled that little section. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time. Subscribe for our latest videos.